What's going on YouTube? Jug here coming at you with another Fallout video. This one is hopefully going to be better than my previous videos. I'm going to take you on a tour of this settlement I built in Fallout 4 as well as offer some advice throughout the construction process. I'll be doing this on the PlayStation so no mods or console commands will be required. Just a lot of caps. So let's get started. What you're looking at here is Spectacle Island. It's off the southeast coast of the castle. Now I've already cleared the trees out of the area and as you can see I've already got a foundation block down built at the lowest point of where I intend to build. And from there it's really just a matter of snapping pieces together. Now we've run into a small problem. There's a gap at the bottom, but we can always drop a shack stairwell and usually the foundation will find its home. Perfect. It's important to note that you cannot snap the shack foundation on top of another, but you can snap the shack stairwells like this, which will allow you to snap the foundation to the stairwell and apply it to the next level. Now all that's left is to just patch up any gaps you have left near the bottom. They don't always like to fit like a glove, but uh, with enough work you can usually squeeze them in there. That should pretty much take care of the foundation. It's three stories high by, I guess, 11 cubes uh, by 11 cubes. And yeah, we can go ahead and get started on the, uh, the structure itself. I 
what we've done here is dropped another shack stairwell. We're going to connect the foundation to it so it snugs tightly up against the layer below it. You can go ahead and get rid of the stairwell now. And we'll just go all the way around with foundation. Once you get done with that, it's probably a pretty good idea to go ahead and get some kind of stairway. Because you're going to want to go up here and uh, this is going to allow you to get inside so we can we can start working on our next level. Right now I'm going to remove all these center blocks on each side of this fourth level. I think it's the fourth, maybe. Yeah. And you'll see why we're doing that here soon. We're going to go ahead and fill it with a uh, a floor roof prefab. Now it's not going to stay there. We're going to take that out later, but for right now we need to get through here and it's not really wasting any parts. You're going to be using them. So we're just going to go around the entire uh, outside of this, or inside rather, of this frame with prefabbed uh, steel floor and roofs. Once you get finished with your prefabs, go ahead and just hop down into the the pit down in the center and set up a, a stairway or a ladder because you're definitely going to need it. Now that you have a prefab going all the way around the first level, you can go ahead and go up on top of the roof and start to repeat the process on the next level. Using the shack wood stairwells, again, you can see how we can snap these prefabs in place, just like we would with the foundations.
now is when you really want to start watching your footing. You're starting to get high up enough to where the fall is definitely getting close to fatal. Quick save often, it will save you a lot of trouble in the end. You can see we've jumped quite a ways ahead here. We are way up in the sky now. I'm just making some adjustments, putting these walls on the outsides where we left our gap going all the way up the sides. Now we're going to try and get up one more level, but I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah, we're outside the build area, so this is going to be as high as we can get. We're going to have to make this the roof and go ahead and start filling in the cement around the outside. Now we're going to go back outside here and start filling in this outer perimeter with cement or the, uh, the shack foundations. Now as you're going through here, you want to leave that gap right in the center of each side. Alright, so I've uh, went ahead and completed most of that. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break for supplies, take a step back, get a good look at it. This is what we've got going on so far. It's looking pretty good, needs a lot more work, but we're almost there. So we've finished off the cement all the way around the outside. I've used these prefabbed hallway uh, ends for the corners since the actual corner piece doesn't quite look right. So I can just use that third wall to um, kind of just create a new room or a, a cubby inside of the building.
so we're pretty much done here. We've got the entire foundation along with the uh, structure itself pretty much complete. I'm going to go ahead and take a step outside and see if we can get a better look at it. So this is pretty much a completed structure. Uh, there's nothing else that really needs to be done to the actual building but coming up I'm going to go ahead and start working on the generators and getting the electricity wired. He was probably wondering what we was going to do with this entire basement area since there was a bunch of ground down here. But as you can see I've filled it with plenty of generators and there's going to be a lot more to come. But for right now we're going to start getting some of this power going. And in order to do that I need to get a connector on that floor panel that I've just placed it on. And I need to lead that connector up to the top connector right there. Now once you've got a hold of the wire you can't jump so but you can go quite a ways around. There we go. The, probably the most important cable in the building that's going to continue all the way up to the top floor. Now I'm going to tweak these connectors a bit and kind of line them up a little better. I like the cord to look straight. And yeah, they, they go right through the floor paneling. They'll go through walls. Uh, they won't go through the foundation because they're so thick. looks pretty good. Now something you can do to line up things that you're mounting on the wall is like what I've used here is just a magazine rack. I'm going to move the object out of the way. Snug the rack up against the wall as close as I can get it. That way if I'm going to put the object on different items, uh, I'm always going to be able to have some kind of a ruler. Okay, so right there. As you can see, it's easier now to then just move all the other lights out of the way. Get your magazine rack up under it. Of course, you don't have to use a magazine rack, but uh, you you know you could use a chair maybe. This isn't going to line you up from the side to side, but it will get the height uh, exact, or at least as close to exact as your eye could see. Now you can also just use a um, a marking on the wall. You know, if you notice a small spot on one of these foundations, 
you could put the light in the same spot on each foundation but if you was to put it on a different style of wall that didn't have those same markings uh, that's not going to work out too well here you see that I've got the the cord is coming down in front of the magazine rack some so I'm going to have to move it out some So we're pretty much done with the construction process. We've got generators on the ground level. All these generators are connected. We've got connectors leading up to each level. Uh, we got some lighting in the place so we can at least see what we're doing. I'm not going to go into too much more on the decorating of the interior. I do want to run over the light box situation out on the front wall. I'm going to do a little bit of work out there and show you how I've stacked these lights so they look nice and neat. So we're looking at the back side of the light boxes now and I want to kind of give an, a demonstration here of why you can't build straight all the way up to the top and just stack them. Of course you could, but if you notice here up against this foundation you get a, a good view of it. The higher you go, the more they lean. And they'll continue to lean until they get way over. And it just it looks very crooked. It's the only object in the game I know that does that. So uh, you kind of, what you kind of got to do is just build little small wood floors between each level and uh, what this allows you to do is reset the difference each time you're building. So now uh, the next level that you build will actually all be attached to the next level and it won't have that uh, I guess big of a difference that you're going to see if you was to build straight all the way up. We've completed the entire building. We've got light boxes all the way up the front side. All that's left now is a way to get inside. So let's get some stairs down. These stairs right here are being uh, very problematic. There we go. Now you can't use those same stairs on the bottom level because they won't go through the ground but we can drop a different type of stair. They look a little bit too much like ladders right now so let's build a frame around them and it'll it'll help it it'll start to look more like stairs and definitely less like a ladder. The only thing it's missing now is some statues. So pick any statue. Uh, you could go with a baseball statue if you was a, a baseball fan, which the baseball statue is kind of small, um, even if you was making a Hall of Fame building. I'm going to go with the Lions. Now I don't want to place them too close to the edge because I would like to stick some lights on the front of these lions. Now I've just goofed and put the same one on both sides. There we go. So, we've uh, completed the entire building Let's get a look at the inside the way it was supposed to be finished.
Coming into the first room here, we'll have a stairway on the left and the right. If you go straight ahead, you can go into the restricted area where the lighting you can see is just kind of plain. Uh, the chairs are plain. It's a very um, work-related environment with, you know, um, toolboxes, construction lights, workbenches, things of that nature. The shelving is, you know, kind of rusty looking. We have two main entrances to get into the electrical area or the, the generator room. Of course, you wouldn't want to be smoking down here. Now, there's a lot more generators here than you saw before. I've went ahead and filled it out. The lining up of these generators was very frustrating. It took a lot of patience using things like the HUD to measure my steps from one generator to the next. Up on the second level I couldn't fit any of the large generators so I just used medium generators. This is just enough power, maybe a little bit more than needed, uh, to power all the lights on the front of the building as well as inside the building. So the entire building is self-sufficient. Here we're going into the main hall. Uh, we have a nice Minutemen statue there. With uh, The lights are actually placed behind those plants so we can get lighting on the front of the statue as well as the back of the statue. A few decorations around. Of course my power armor collection is slacking a bit. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on this building. I really haven't completed the story so hopefully I'll be getting a lot more to fill in and you've got plenty of room to put more power armor and obviously if you wanted more stations there's room for that as well. Up on the balcony area overlooking the hall we have a, a bar area. Plenty of lighting in here, but when it gets dark, it gets a little bit darker in here, but the lighting uh, was definitely an issue. We've got lots of lights in here. I dare not walk by that shelf on the back. So I'm going to This area right here is just a walkway. This uh, is a good view of the downstairs area, the, or the main hall rather. We're going to go up one more level into the living quarters. We got bathrooms on both sides. Men's bathroom here. 
not much to look at. I wouldn't really want to use one of these bathrooms if I had to. But they're there. We have plenty of paintings on the wall just to liven up the area. Now this is Strong's room, you can tell by the cat pictures. Now we're going into the dining area. We have concessions around Nuka-Cola all the amenities over on the other side is a kitchen well at least a stove if we go over here to the other side of this room we'll go into the lab area. I'm not sure it's safe to be eating near the laboratory, but nobody's complained yet. Now those test tubes are not easy to get inside that rack. And we're going to go down the hall a bit into kind of your personal chamber. This area has a little weapon rack for you. You know, you could decorate it however you want, put whatever guns up there. You've got a magazine rack here, a couple of them. Uh, obviously, you may need more. I still have a lot more bobbleheads to collect. But these are the ones I've got. It's a place you can store them. Small lounge corner here. This would be, uh, I guess, the player's personal room. Of course, you could use any room. Uh, this is what I've selected for mine. And now we're going up to the upper deck. This is kind of a wreck area. You know, we have a, a basketball hoop there, some patio furniture, little grill out. couple concession stands there, not concession stands, but vending machines. Uh, I never was uh, the best basketball player. Now if anybody manages to actually pull this off, I've tried this. <laughs> I've tried this a lot. I think I may have stepped over the line on that one.
this is just a balcony area you could come out here if you wanted to take a look around you of course those towers are non-functional they're useless anyways you can't get settlers to this place you can just you could bring all your companions here though And there you have it, the Minutemen Citadel, or so I like to call it, on Spectacle Island with a towering light bar that can be customized to a variety of colors of your choosing. And uh, thanks for watching, and if you liked it, remember to hit that like button.